Hey everybody, Sean from Movie Assault here, and it is time for my February 2021 pickups. I've got Blu-rays and uh, some 4K stuff, no DVDs this month. And first thing I wanted to show you is actually something that's not a, a Blu-ray per se. It's actually a set of cases that I got off of eBay for the Godzilla Criterion Collection. Now, I love this collection. It's a fantastic um, quality, but it comes in a huge oversized case. And as a result, I can't put it on my shelf. So I went on eBay and I found these, which are literally just cases with um, artwork. And you can see the quality of the artwork. This is for the first um, first set of movies. And then the second set is comes in this case also with artwork but it looks really good i mean it's obviously not official criterion but it looks pretty damn good i have no idea what what you'll get if you scan that upc but it fits in it's going to fit on my shelf and it's going to just make me more cognizant of the fact that i actually have this in my collection because i have to keep it on a shelf that's protected and it's actually a closed shelf that I can't see so I obviously don't see it as much as I see the stuff that's on my shelf and as a result I just it's not a sort of an out of sight out of mind thing which is, is a shame because it's a great collection so yeah if you're interested in that just do a search on eBay and uh, you should be able to find it without too much problem and yeah, well worth it in my oh and uh, just to show you the inside, which is obviously a lot more um, convenient than the, the sleeves. You can see everything is cased up nicely. So, Doop. All right, so getting to the actual pickups for the month of February. The first one is one that I got from Family Video off their website. This is a film that uh, it's an upgrade for me. And by upgrade, I mean serious upgrade because I used to have this on VHS that I taped off HBO, I think. Um, and that is Amazon Women on the Moon. I haven't seen this in quite a while. This is sort of a... Um, uh, sort of a sketch comedy. Um, it means to emulate a, a night of late night TV watching. So there's different takes on movies and commercials and things. Most of them work. Some of them don't. Um, but it is directed by, or the individual sequences are directed by Joe Dante, Carl Gottlieb, Peter Horton, John Landis, and Robert K. Weiss. And this features just an absolutely crazy cast, including Steve Allen, Rosanna Arquette, uh, Paul Bartell, Ralph Bellamy, Ed Begley Jr., Sybil Danning, Griffin Dunn, Carrie Fisher, Steve Forrest, uh, David Allen Greer, Stephen Gu Steve Gutenberg, Arsenio Hall, Phil Hartman, Howard Hessman, uh, Peter Hortman, B.B. King, Russ Meyer, Michelle Pfeiffer. Just an absolutely crazy collection of people. Um, this is this is admittedly not the greatest film ever made, but it's one of my um, favorites from my, not my youth, but I would say from um, my high school days. Um, this is from 1987. It's from Kino Lorber. That's the back. And uh, it is region A locked, 85 minutes. And uh, there you go. Amazon Women in the Moon. Uh, we'll go with uh, Amazon pickups next. And I've got a metric shit ton of Amazon stuff. Um, these aren't in any particular order, but I picked up the Vinegar Syndrome release of Fade to Black, starring Dennis Christopher. Uh, this is another film that I used to watch on HBO a long time ago, and this is another upgrade. This replaces a scratched-up DVD that I had in my collection. Um that I got in a two-pack with the film called Hell Night with Linda Blair that I got at Half Price Books and it was on their clearance shelf because it was so scratched up. Hell Night was so scratched up it wasn't even playable, but I got it for a dollar. 
um, but I was able to pick this up or was able to pick it up and watch it the fade to black but I'm very glad to have this in my collection on blu-ray this is a film that I really uh, f at first watch I thought it was um, not that great but it's grown on me over the years um, Dennis Christopher's performance is fantastic um, also have um, an appearance from Mickey Rourke in this and oh what is his name oh it's gonna bother me he's a stand-up comedian Tim Tom Tim Thomerson yeah he's in this playing a detective um, excellent movie especially for film fans lots of references uh, another big addition to my collection is this 10-pack of Focus Features. Uh, this includes uh, Lost in Translation, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Pride and Prejudice, Brokeback Mountain, Atonement, Burn After Reading, Moonrise Kingdom, The Theory of Everything, and On the Basis of Sex, and Harriet. The majority of these I have not seen. I've seen Lost in Translation, one of my all-time favorite films, uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, another of my all-time favorite films, and both films I do own um, other copies of, but Pride and Prejudice I have not seen, Atonement I have not seen, um, The Theory of Everything I have not seen, and On the Basis of Sex and Harriet I have not seen. So um, this was on sale. It was marked down from list price of $99.99, I believe, and it was $39.99. So adding these 10 movies to my collection on Blu-ray absolutely worth it um, I think Lost in Translation is an upgrade from DVD and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is a duplicate because I do have that in my collection um, already but it's it's worth owning uh, another re-edition to my collection uh, this is a two-pack double feature of Braveheart and Gladiator uh, two excellent excellent films Braveheart from 95, Gladiator from 2000, I believe. And um, I am, I mean, you get your man card revoked if you don't like these films, I think. Um, but uh, I love both of these movies. I, Braveheart was an, just one of my all-time favorites for the longest time. Um, both of these won Best Picture. I don't think Gladiator necessarily deserved Best Picture, um, but it is a fantastic movie, don't get me wrong. Um, but I really, really enjoy both of these. I saw both of these in the theater when they came out, and I'm glad to have them back in my collection. Uh, this one is a film that I saw in theaters when it came out in 1981, and I got it at a good price, and I really want to give it another shot, and that is Neighbors, starring Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, and... Uh, Kathy Moriarty is in this. I really do not remember a whole lot about this film from when I saw it in the theater, other than I thought that it was incredibly disappointing because it's it's like a role reversal. Belushi plays the straight man in this, and Dan Aykroyd's kind of the zany one. And that's usually a, a playing against type, and I think that let a lot of people down. Um, I don't think the movie itself is bad. I just think that the the expectations were a lot different so I really wanted to revisit this and see um, you know since it's been geez 30 years since this came out um, 30 years 40 years Ugh. Uh, <laughs> so this movie's 40 years old I really really want to see it again and I like the uh, interesting packaging um, from Mill Creek, they have these VHS uh, slip covers. Here's the actual movie slip cover, which is actually kind of cool. I actually like that artwork a lot better than the slip cover artwork, but glad to have both. And uh, I really like the amount of detail on these. I have one more of these slip covers, two more of these movies in these types of slip covers coming up. Uh, a more recent release is Russell Crowe in Unhinged. Uh, this is a film that I actually ended up renting on um, on demand and liked it enough to buy it. I got it at a fairly decent price. Um, really, really enjoyed this. Uh, it, it's... <laughs> 
it's sort of one of those guilty pleasure movies. It's it's not a fantastic film by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it is well put together. Russell Crowe gives a, a literally unhinged performance, so the name of the movie is quite apt. And um, you can see the artwork is exactly the same. Um, but the, the, just an entertaining movie, a definite good watch for a Saturday night. Um, I won't give anything away, um, but Crow is just absolutely uh, excellent in this. And his, his victim, Karen Pistorius, does an adequate job too. This is a uh, 2020 release. And I think it did make it into some theaters and drive-ins over the summer. Another re-addition to my collection is the Criterion edition of Silence of the Lambs. Um, I had to get part with this last, or not last year, but the year before. Um, so I'm glad to have this back. This is one of my all-time favorite movies. Um, and this edition just does it absolute justice. This is a um, an amazing package. I have not opened it just because I owned it before and I know what's in it. But... Uh, you can read that. There are the special features. As always with Criterion, you get what you pay for, and um, just glad to have this. Um, the performance in the performances in this are absolutely fantastic. Of course, Jodie Foster and Scott Glenn, um, but also you can't leave out Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter, um, and Jonathan Demme's direction is stellar. So, just an excellent, excellent movie. Here's another of those uh, retro slip covers I was telling you about. This is The Freshman with Marlon Brando and Matthew Broderick. Saw this in the theater when it came out. This is kind of an underrated and forgotten film. Glad to see it on Blu-ray from Mill Creek. Um, here is the uh, alternate artwork that's underneath the slip cover. And if you can't tell, Brando is playing off of his uh, role in The Godfather as Don Corleone. Um, he plays here a Carmine Sabatini, and uh, Matthew Broderick is a college freshman, and he gets involved with the mob in sort of an unusual uh, caper. I'll put it that way. But uh, this is this is a very good, very underrated, and very underseen film, and Brando is actually very, very good in it as well. This is a blind buy that I figured as a movie fan I owed it to myself to own and see. It's The Lighthouse. I don't know much about this and want to keep it that way until I see it, but I've heard nothing but fantastic things about this. Absolutely um, just couldn't escape hearing great things about it. I got this for five bucks, I believe, off of Amazon. So glad to finally have this in my collection. William Defoe, Willem Defoe and Robert Pattinson. Uh, <clears throat> um and this, this is on my, my docket to watch ASAP before somebody spoils it for me. Um, this is a collection of films, and I apologize, I'm just peeling something off the front of it. This is a collection of films that um, are sequels to a film that I absolutely love, but I have not seen the third one, Poltergeist 3, and I saw Poltergeist 2 once, so I'm absolutely overdue for a rewatch re of 2, and a first viewing of three. Um, I had gotten wind this is out of print, but I was able to get it on Amazon for $14.99. Um, the used DVD store that I've been going to <clears throat> and that I have a ton of movies from uh, this month is selling this used for 20 bucks. And I thought, well, if I can get it new for 15, I'm not gonna pay 20 for it used. This actually came yesterday and I'm glad to have this finally available on Blu-ray or in my collection on Blu-ray. It's Pump Up the Volume from 1990. This is a film that I sought out in theaters. I could tell you a very long story about how I tracked down this film in my local area. Only one place was showing it. And uh, my girlfriend at the time and I, we arrived at the theater and it wasn't open yet because we didn't have show times. We just knew it was there. So we drove around all day waiting for this uh, to start and then we finally saw it. It was absolutely worth it. But funny story is I ended up managing that theater um, about 10 years later. But anyway, not that you care about that. Pump up the volume, fantastic movie uh, with Christian Slater and um, uh, Samantha Mathis, who is listed here as, as introducing. So this was her first film. And Ellen Green is in this as well. He plays a, um, 
a shy kid in high school, but at night he is a DJ, um, and he goes by the name of um, Hard Harry. And I have not seen this in a really long time. It's probably been 10, 15 years since I've seen this, so I'm really looking forward to watching this again. Absolutely love this movie. We'll see how well it stacks up in 2021. And this is a film that I bought because the sequel is coming out on Amazon Prime in next week, actually. So I picked up the 4K Steelbook version of Coming to America with Eddie Murphy, another film that I caught in the theater. Uh, absolutely love this movie. Um, just really overdue for a rewatch, but um, oh, just noticed the Steelbook is broken. Or not broken, but slightly damaged. That's not cool. A little, little bending right there. Didn't notice that till just now. Oh well, it's not too too bad. I could probably rebend it back into place because it's not it's not super bad. Anyway, uh, so this is directed by John Landis and also features Arsenio Hall, James Earl Jones, John Amos, um, among others. A score by Niall Rogers, and I love that it includes the Randy Watson bonus poster for his world tour. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. All right, next up is from Hamilton Book. And I actually did a video about these, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but I picked up The Runaways with Dakota Fanning and Kristen Stewart. And uh, like I said in the previous video that I did about these, I don't know how accurate this film is, but it's, uh, it's very entertaining. Uh, the Demolisher, which... Um, just sounded interesting, so I really wanted to pick this up and check it out for five bucks. Um, it, it rem the, the name and the concept reminds me of The Exterminator from the 80s. Pray for Death, a martial arts film starring Sho Kasugi um, from Enter the Ninja and a bunch of other ninja movies. Uh, I've read mixed reviews about this, but it's an Arrow uh, release, so if nothing else, it'll look good even if it stinks, but I've heard good good things about it and bad things, so it's been kind of a, a mixed uh, mixed bag, but interested to see that. Uh, also picked up Gangster Squad, which I have not finished watching um, and plan to do so very quickly. And here is another of the Mill Creek retro VHS covers. This is Chuck Norris in Silent Rage. And this is a blind buy. I have never seen this. Looking forward to it. Most of the, the early 80s Chuck Norris movies I've seen um, at least once or they had them on in the background enough to, to kind of get the gist of them. That was, you know, when I was a lot younger and they'd be on HBO. I rarely went to the movies to see Chuck Norris films, although I did see Invasion USA at the theater. Um, but this one is a... It, it says martial arts master versus superhuman killing machine. And if that doesn't sound irresistible, I don't know what does. And then another John Landis film. It appears that I'm getting a lot of John Landis movies lately. Um, Animal House, National Lampoon's Animal House with John Belushi, another Belushi film too. Uh, Tim Matheson, John Vernon, and um, a lot of other co-stars. So more detail on those. Go ahead and check out my Hamilton order uh, video that I posted uh, a couple of maybe a week or so ago. All right, these next ones I picked up at Best Buy. Um, I mentioned it last month that I wanted to pick this up. This is the 4K reissue of They Live, the John Carpenter film starring Rowdy Roddy Piper and Keith David um, and Meg Foster. Absolutely love this movie, so I didn't want to get Prince of Darkness and not include this in my collection as well. I love both of those movies equally. This, of course, features the absolute most ridiculous fist fight scene in movie history, and um, why not have that in 4K? So, love this movie. Saw this at the theater. This actually played at a theater that I was managing back in 1988, and I used to go in and watch it constantly. I love this movie. Fantastic. Uh, this is a blind buy. Pick this up. I've heard nothing but good things about this, The Dark and the Wicked. Uh, somebody gave it a glowing review saying it's the scariest movie they've ever seen. Um, and on that, I just decided to pick it up and uh, check it out for myself. Slipcover artwork is the same as the disc. Uh, not a lot of special features on this one, just a Q&A um, with Mark, Mar Marin Ireland, who is one of the stars, and Michael Abbott Jr., who is also one of the stars. 
Um, but this is from the writer and director of The Strangers, which was a super creepy film. So this should be pretty good. If you've seen it, let me know what you thought of it. All right, next up is a bunch of stuff I got from Big Lots. Um, first one is White Bird in a Blizzard, Blind Buy. Don't know much about it. I just know um, Shailene Woodley. I like her a lot. She's usually pretty good in most of the things. But this also has Ava Green, who um, is just absolutely stunning. And another, a bunch of other people... Um, uh, Christopher Maloney is in this, and I'm going to massacre her name. Uh, Gab Gabri Sidibi? It's probably wrong. But anyway, for three bucks, I figured I'd give this a shot. This is the future Miss Aaron Rodgers. Uh, also picked this one up. Don't know anything about it, but it looks pretty intense. It's called The Deadlands. Uh, mainly got it. Um, because it looks like a, a decent action film. Um, it says the action is breathtaking, performances are compelling, don't miss it, from Peter Jackson, who is um, pretty, a pretty good, I would say, a pretty good uh, judge of action. So but how can you resist that? that that's impressive looking. <laughs> so I don't know what this is about. It just says... Um, a Maori chieftain's teenage son must avenge his father's murder in order to bring peace and honor to the souls of his loved ones after his tribe is slaughtered through an act of treachery. Sounds good. For, for uh, three bucks, not, why not? Um, these two are re-additions to my collection. I've seen both of these and enjoyed them very much. Machete, starring... Uh, oh, geez, Danny Trejo. His name just completely went out of my brain but also including Steven Seagal, Michelle Rodriguez, Jessica Alba, and Robert De Niro in small but effective roles. A lot of fun, this movie is. And another um, re-edition. I, I love this movie. This is a um, Martin Scorsese film that totally plays against what he's usually associated with. This is Hugo. I really enjoyed this movie. This features um, uh, Ben Kingsley, uh, Sarah, Sasha Baron Cohen, Asa Butterfield, and Chloe Grace Moretz, uh, and Ray Winstone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just a, a very entertaining film, um, and uh, really well made. Excellent special effects. Very CGI heavy, but it, it's not ridiculous. I mean, it is ridiculous, but it's it it's well done. So Martin Scorsese film. All right, and then the remainder of these are Dollar Tree and uh, pickups from the Buy, Sell, Trade Place that I visit once a month. And I really went to town at the Buy, Sell, Trade Place. So first I picked up Fury. I mainly picked this up because it. I, I watched a movie last month called White Tiger, um, which was a Dollar Tree. Uh, it was available on Dollar Tree. I ended up watching it on Amazon Prime. But a lot of people compared it to this film, and I really wanted to see this because I liked White Tiger. I thought it was really well done. Um, so I picked this up and managed to get it with the slipcover, um, even though it's the same artwork. Um, it's got Brad Pitt in it. Uh, who else is in this? Uh, Shia LaBeouf, John Bernthal, and Scott Eastwood, and Michael Pena, among others. This is the best war film since Saving Private Ryan and Platoon. So that's no faint praise. See how well this stacks up against White Tiger, which was a Russian film and very good. If you've got Amazon Prime, definitely check that out. Uh, this is an Arnold Schwarzenegger double pack. This is Collateral Damage, which I've never seen, and Eraser, which I have seen. It's been a long time. That was It came out right around the time that his career was sort of plateauing at the box office. Eraser's entertaining. Uh, James Kahn is in that, and uh, he is actually pretty entertaining in it. But Collateral Damage, I've never seen. I started watching it on HBO one day a long time ago and just never finished it. And the price on this was right. This was like five bucks, so I figured I would give, it, give both of these a shot again for Eraser and for the first time with Collateral Damage. If you've seen either of those, let me know what you thought. This was actually on the clearance rack at the... Um, the buy sell trade place and it was in excellent condition came with a slip cover it's a total blind buy but Liam Neeson Ed Harris um, 
oh, who else is in this? Vincent D'Onofrio and um, Common. Joel Kinnaman as well. Run all night. No sin goes unpunished. I don't know anything about this, um, but it's Liam Neeson. It's an action movie. It's got a decent cast, and for what I paid for it, which was $1.50, cannot pass it up. This is a total um, unexpected surprise. I didn't think I'd be getting this, but The Doors, I love this movie. Oliver Stone film from the early 90s, I think 91, yep. Uh, when this came out in the theater, I was working at a theater as a projectionist, and we stayed after one night, and all the employees watched this film. We all fell in love with it. Um, all became uh, very, very easy Doors fans after this. Um, in terms of how factual this film is, I, I doubt that it is that factual. I've read a biography on Jim Morrison, and I know there are some things in here that are not quite um, truthful, but it's an entertaining film, and on that note, it's worth having. This is a film that I had on DVD and enjoyed very much. It's um, it's promoted as being from James Cameron, but he did not direct it. He just was the executive producer. It was actually directed by um, Alistair Grierson. Oh, Alistair Grierson. I thought it was two names. Um, but this is actually an interesting um, sort of uh, underwater cave diving film. It's it's very action-packed. It's If you're claustrophobic, this will give you the willies. Um, if you enjoyed... Um, 47 meters down uncaged you may enjoy this although there are no sharks in this um, but it's it's along those same lines of claustrophobia it's it's a really good film and pretty solid and I got it on clearance for a buck fifty so why not also on clearance are these next two titles I've never seen this I'm glad to have it in my collection Slumdog Millionaire uh, this of course won best picture um, when did it win? It was a while ago. I was actually surprised that it was that long ago. 2008, 2009, somewhere in that vicinity. I didn't realize it was that old. I was talking to my wife and she had seen it. I had not. Um, I thought it came out in like 2013. I totally, my brain is used to be really good with dates, but totally can't remember when things come out. Um, but this is, um, still got the the security tag sticker on it, but for $1.50. Um, it's in excellent shape. Couldn't pass it up. If you've seen that, let me know what you thought. Did it deserve the Best Picture Oscar? Uh, this is sort of a guilty pleasure film. I have not seen this. This is a total blind buy. This is Olympus Has Fallen, starring Morgan Freeman and uh, Ger Gerard Butler, who I just recently watched in Greenland, which is entertaining, and Aaron Eckhart. Um, of course, this has spawned two sequels, but I haven't seen any of them, so I wanted to start off and watch this one. If you've seen it, let me know what you thought. Uh, I've seen both of these, but wanted to get them back into my collection. The Sherlock Holmes films with Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law. This, of course, is Sherlock Holmes and A Game of Shadows. Um, and very cool that they are on two separate discs, which I enjoy very much. And um, I saw both of these in the theater, and I enjoy them. Um, I liked the first one quite a bit better than the second one. The second one was entertaining, um, but the first one was by far the, the superior one. And I haven't heard, are they making another one? Is Robert Downey Jr. going to play Sherlock Holmes again? Um... Is that in the works? I'm not sure. Let me know if you know. And just watch this one um, earlier this month. This is Contagion. Uh, this is a really well done pandemic film. If, you know, that kind of thing were actually able to happen. Who, who would think? Um, this actually came out in 2010, I believe. Uh, do not find a date on here, but I believe it is 2010. Let me see if the disc says. Nope. Oh, 2011. Um, and I'll have to check and see if this digital code still works. I doubt it. It's an ultraviolet one. Um, but uh, watch this 
with my wife we both enjoyed it and it's it's very interesting to watch in this day and age because it got so many things about pandemics correct um so it's very science-based which of course in this day and age people seem to turn their nose up to science for some stupid reason but um if things were to go pretty much as science would dictate this is pretty accurate um it does take into account conspiracy theories jude law plays a character um whose name escapes me but it's a really stupid name uh the character's name is just really dumb um and he has horrible teeth in this film but um he sort of represents the con the conspiracy theory type people that we're seeing uh with the COVID 19 situation so it, it hits pretty close to home on most most aspects of a global pandemic um, it's a little more accelerated than we found with COVID 19. i mean here we are a year later and we still don't have uh, a, a everybody vaccinated and whatnot but um if you're looking for some reality-based entertainment, Contagion is worth it. Uh, this is a film that I have only seen once, and it was a long time ago on HBO, and that is Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is the 1978 remake of the original, uh, the original from the 50s. Uh, this stars Donald Sutherland, um, Brooke Adams, Leonard Nimoy, Jeff Goldblum, Veronica Cartwright, um, and uh, Kevin McCarthy has a cameo in this i believe and kevin mccarthy was in the original invasion of the body snatchers uh looking forward to watching this again for the first time in a very long time and then the last of the buy sell trade films this is another martin scorsese film uh another one that from what i understand is underrated and un overlooked the king of comedy which i have not seen this is a total blind buy with Robert De Niro and Jerry Lewis in what has been touted as a really, really good role for him and an excellent performance. Um, I don't know anything about this other than, um, you know, it's not been on Blu-ray up until recently, obviously. This came out in 2014, so it's been out for about seven years on Blu-ray, but it's the first time I've ever seen it anywhere used. Uh, picked it up for five bucks, so I'm really looking forward to watching this and uh, hopefully we'll be entertained. Let me know if you've seen that. And then the last three, these are total blind buys from Dollar Tree. Um, I posted these on Instagram and every, each one of them got somebody to praise them and said they were good. So I'm looking forward to seeing all three. The first is from um, a director, writer, and producer named Hadi Haja, Haja, Hajagi. I, I'm screwing that up, so I apologize. It's called gl 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 <laughs> Clean Skin. Um, if you've seen this, let me know what you thought of it. But uh, it's gotten good reviews from uh, my Instagram followers, so um, interested to see this. So this, of course, was a dollar. And this one with Viola Davis and Jennifer Lopez. Lopez. It's called Lila and Eve. And this one is... Um, also gotten some pretty good reviews, uh, especially for Viola Davis's performance. So interested to see this one. This is sort of a uh, revenge type film from what I've gathered. And then this one with Rosario Dawson and Katherine Heigl is unforgettable. And this is probably outside of the normal wheelhouse that I would pick up, but uh, this got some decent reviews from Instagram peoples as well. So... Yeah, if you've seen any of these three films, let me know what you thought. If you've seen any of the movies in this video, let me know what you thought. Uh, I'd be glad to uh, hear from you in the comments section below. And as always, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hit that like button for this video and hit the bell so you get notified the next time I make a video, which should not be too terribly long from now. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. This was a long one, lots of movies. I said at the end of last month that I probably wouldn't pick up as many movies in February as I did in January, and I was right. It was just I picked up more. <laughs> so uh, a little out of control this month, but uh, we'll see what happens in March. Um, so yeah, as always, feel free to subscribe. As I just said, time for me to go. My brain is failing. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. Bye.